As well as spinach, you'll need grated cheese, a carrot, salt, black pepper, roasted red pepper, self-raising flour, vegetable oil, and water. I've got a bowl of flour, and I'm going to get a pinch of salt and put it in. That's it, make a hole in the middle, then add vegetable oil. What's next? I'm going to put some water in. And start mixing. I'm trying to make dough. If it gets a little bit sticky, add some more flour. Usually we use our hands in Trinidad. That's why I'm using mine. Add some more water. Make the dough into a ball. My grandma taught my mum how to make this. And then my mum taught me how to make it. I'm just going to wash my hands. Cover the bowl with a clean tea towel and put it to one side. In another bowl, add grated carrot, chopped roasted red pepper and the grated cheese. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? That's right, spinach. Spinach is a leafy flowering plant and the leaves are the part of the plant that we eat. There are different types of spinach. Some have dark green curly leaves. Some have wide, smooth leaves, and others have slightly crinkly leaves. Spinach is full of things that are good for you. Some people think it can give you strong bones and muscles. And many years ago, artists used the green colour in spinach leaves to help them make green ink and paint. Carefully chop the spinach and add it to the bowl. What's next? I'm going to put some pepper in. Then mix it, mix it, mix it. What's next, Amelia? I'm going to do my dough. Sprinkle some flour to stop the dough sticking. Split the dough in half. Add some more flour. Then roll one half out with a rolling pin. I first learned to roll a roti in Trinidad. Trinidad is a very hot place and it's always sunny. Now, I'm going to cut the roti halfway up. Careful with those scissors. And paint it with vegetable oil. Then, take half of your yummy filling and sprinkle it over the rolled dough. We're going to start rolling. I'm rolling it up into a cone. And then, I'm pinching this edge and tucking it inside. Let's see what everyone thinks later, as dried cherries are one of the ingredients in Isaac's recipe. You'll also need butter, cold water, ground cinnamon, plain flour, milk and currants. So we get the flour and put the butter and cinnamon with the flour. We mix it up with our fingers. We're tickling it like you're tickling somebody. <laughs> Keep tickling the mixture until it starts to look like breadcrumbs. Now I'm going to add the water. Add some cold water. Then bring it all together with your hands to make the pastry. In Lancashire, there's a castle and even a lake. Chili cake's very traditional. I like cooking, it's very good to taste something new. That's right, squeeze it into a ball, then cover the bowl with a clean tea towel for later. To make the filling, add ground cinnamon to currants. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's dried cherries. Cherry trees have beautiful flowers and grow small fruits called cherries. Cherries are often red, but can also be yellow, orange, or even black. Inside each cherry is a stone. Cherries can be eaten fresh, dried, or cooked where the stone's been taken out, and in sweet and savory recipes, such as pies, jams, meat dishes, and they can even be used in perfumes. Cherries have been eaten for so many years, 
that it's thought that even ancient cave people may have eaten them. Now I'm going to cut the dried cherries. Carefully chop up the dried cherries and add them to the rest of your ingredients. Give them a good, good mix. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Sprinkle flour onto the worktop and roll out the pastry with a rolling pin. Do it very gentle. That's right, very gently. Keep rolling until the pastry's nice and thin. Then dip the rim of a small bowl into flour and use it to cut out a circle of pastry. Press it really hard. Do the same again until you have cut out four circles. Dip it in. This is really fun to do. It looks fun. Now re-roll the dough and cut out another four circles in the same way. Cooked black beans are one of the main ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need oranges, chilli powder, spring onions, chopped garlic, chopped tomatoes, cooked beef, cabbage leaves, chorizo sausage, flour, water and a stock cube. First, I'm going to take my water and crumble the cube into my water. Crumble the stock cube into warm water. Next, I'm going to put my garlic in. Now I'm going to put my chilli powder in. Make sure you don't get any in your eyes, then give it a mix. Now I'm going to juice out my oranges. Squeeze the juice out of your oranges, just like this. I've been to Brazil once and I really liked it. When we were in Brazil, we ate lots of yummy foods. We had lots of rice and beans. Sounds delicious. Pour the fresh orange juice into the stock mixture. What's next? I'm going to chop up my spring onions. Carefully cut the ends off spring onions and cut them into pieces. In Brazil, they speak Portuguese. I can't speak speaking Portuguese, but I can say a few words. Bom dia means hello. Bom dia, Anaya. Pop the spring onions into a casserole dish. And now I'm going to get my stuff out of the fridge. Anaya's mum has cooked and cooled some beef and chopped up Chorizo's sausage for her. Add the beef to the casserole dish. Sprinkle over plain flour and mix it so all of the meat is coated in flour. Add chopped chorizo, then pour in the stock mixture. And mix it, mix it, mix it. And now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's cooked black beans. Black beans grow in pods on plants, usually found in hot countries. When the pods turn yellow, they are ready to be picked and the beans inside are left to dry so they can be cooked. Black beans can be cooked and added to soups, dips, vegetarian burgers and eaten with eggs for breakfast. Black beans can be good for you and in China, cooked black beans are used in medicine to help treat people with painful knees. Now I'm going to wash my black beans. Drain a can of cooked black beans and rinse them under cold water. In Portuguese, black beans are called feijão. Tip the beans into the casserole dish. Pour in some chopped tomatoes and you've guessed it. Mix it, mix it, mix it again. You'll also need spring onions, black pepper, cooked bacon, milk, eggs, and semolina. First, I'm going to crack my eggs. Crack an egg into a mug. Check it for shell, then whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. Then do the same with another egg. Check if there's no shells, give it a stir, and put it in the bowl. Don't forget to wipe your hands after touching raw egg. 
Now I'm going to pour the milk into the bowl and give it a bit of a whisk. Carefully trim the ends off the spring onions and cut them into pieces. In uh, Lithuania it can be very cold in, in the wintertime, very hot in the summer. Now we're going to put the spring onions into the mixing bowl. Add black pepper. And then you give it a mix. Sprinkle some semolina over the bottom of the baking dish. This will help to make the base nice and crunchy. My mum is from the city of Trakai. In Trakai, there's a big castle and lots of lakes. And it's pretty. Now it's time for my very special ingredients. And you know what that is, don't you? It's potatoes. Potatoes are a type of vegetable that grow underground. When the plant is dug out of the ground, the roots will have potatoes growing on them, ready to be picked. Potatoes are a popular vegetable all around the world, and most of the world's potatoes are grown in China. And it's been reported that potatoes were the first vegetable to be taken into space. This is my sister, Mylene, and she's going to help me grow the potatoes. Ask a grown-up to peel and chop some potatoes for you. And then I, I'll squish it down and I'll break the potatoes. Good work, Harry, and thanks for helping, Mylene. Now I'm going to scoop all of the great potatoes out. And then I'm going to dry them. That will get rid of any extra water. Remember to use a clean tea towel to dry the potatoes. Put them into the bowl. Give it a stir. Keep going until you have grated all the potatoes. We use a lot of potatoes in this Lithuanian food. And now I'm going to put them into the bowl. That's it, Mylene. Keep going. Let's see if Aksara can change their minds because tamarind is a special ingredient in her recipe. You'll also need turmeric powder, chopped tomatoes, curry leaves, shallots, coconut milk, fish, chilli powder, coriander powder, vegetable oil, fennel seeds, fenugreek seeds, garlic puree and mustard seeds. First I'm going to get my dish and then I'm going to get my vegetable oil. Spoon the oil into an oven-proof dish and add mustard seeds, fennel seeds, fenugreek seeds, curry leaves and then give it a mix. Makisa, can you help me with the shallots? Aksara's big sister, Makisa, is helping to prepare the shallots by carefully cutting off the ends, like this. Now peeling the shallots. Carefully cut the shallots in half and then chop them into small pieces. Now I'm going to put my shallots in the dish. Give it a mix, cover the dish with foil and ask the grown-up to help. Mum, could you put this in the oven, please? Mum is putting the shallot and spice mixture in the oven to cook for a while. Now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's tamarind. The tamarind fruit grows on trees in long brown pods. Inside the pod are seeds and juicy pulp, which have a sweet and sour taste. It can be added to soups and dessert, or dried in a block, then soaked in water to make tamarind paste. It's been said that tamarind can be good for you, and in Asia, some people rub it on their foreheads to make them feel better. Aksara has already soaked her dried tamarind in water. Now I'm going to mash up the tamarind with my fingers. 
tip the soap tamarind into a sieve and push the pulp through like this to get rid of any lumps. I like the smell of tamarind. Now I'm going to scrape off the, the tamarind at the bottom of the sieve into the bowl. Wow, that looks very messy but such fun. Because sweet potato is one of the main ingredients in his recipe. You'd also need cherry tomatoes, vegetable oil, spring onions, plain flour, garlic puree, baking powder, fresh coriander and salt. Matteo starting with the pebre, a side dish made with chopped up fresh ingredients. Put the coriander leaves into the jug. Along with the juicy tomatoes. My favourite bit about chilli is the hotness. Mmm, it's lovely and hot there. What's next? Now I'm going to chop it all up with the scissors. Careful of your fingers, Matteo. Then add chopped spring onions and garlic puree. Mix it, mix it, mix it. And that's the pebre ready for later. Next, take your bowl of flour and add some baking powder. Add a pinch of salt. And give it a little stir. Mmm, you'll need this to make the dough later. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, sweet potato. A sweet potato plant has roots that you can eat called tubers. The inside of a tuber can be orange, white, purple, red, pink, yellow or even violet. Sweet potato can be boiled and mashed, roasted, fried or even juiced. And the juice from the flesh of the sweet potato can be used to dye cloth different colours. Ask a grown-up to cook and cool the sweet potatoes for you. Now we are going to twist the sweet potato and take the inside out. In Chile, sweet potato is called camote. Camote. Never mind if your hands get messy, it's part of the fun. <laughs> it does look fun. Then add five spoons of oil. Uno, which means one. Dos, which means two. Tres, which means three. Cuatro, which means four. And cinco, which means five. Excellent Spanish counting, Mateo. Spanish is the language spoken by most people in Chile. Now we are going to mix it up. Mix it, mix it, mix it. We are going to put the potato into the bowl. Mix the potato into the flour to make your dough. I have lots of family in Chile. We have lots of traditions and I'm going to show you one. Can't wait to see that later, Mateo. Now we are going to knead the dough. That means to push and pull it. Go on, Mateo. Capers are one of the ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need lemon, fish, sweet potatoes, black pepper, gherkins, breadcrumbs, mayonnaise, eggs, vegetable oil and flour. First, I'm going to get my sweet potatoes. Esme's mum has chopped some sweet potatoes into wedges. I'm going to pour my oil on my sweet potatoes. Grind in some black pepper. Now I'm going to grab my spoon and I'm going to mix it, mix it, mix it. That's right, give it a good mix. Then tip the sweet potatoes onto baking paper on an oiled baking tray and put it to one side for later. Then crack an egg into a mug. Don't forget to check for shell. And then get your fork and then whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. Pour the egg into a bowl. And then do the same with another egg. I'm going to wipe my hands after touching raw egg. Now I'm going to grab my fish. Well done, Esme. We're ready for the fish. Okay, please help me check if there's any bones in it. Esme and her mum are checking that there are no bones in the fish. A 
think they're fine, Esme. There's no bones. Thank you, Mum. Coat the fish with flour. Then the egg and the breadcrumbs. Place the fish onto baking paper on an oiled baking tray. Then do the same with the rest of the fish. This is looking pretty good, boy, now. Now I need to wash my hands. Well done, Esme. It's important to wash your hands after touching raw fish. Brush the fish with vegetable oil. This will help it to turn crispy and golden in the oven. It's a bit like painting this, isn't it? <laughs> crispy, crispy, crispy. Ma, can you please help me put my fish in the oven? Then ask a grown-up to help you put the fish and sweet potato into the oven. Now it's time for my special ingredient. <laughs> and you know what that is, don't you? It's capers. The caper bush grows flower buds called capers. They're picked by hand when they're dark green and about the size of a pea. Capers are usually dried in the sun and often have salt added to them before being put into a mixture called a pickle. Capers are used in salads and meat recipes and they're an ingredient in tartar sauce, which goes really well with fish. Ground black pepper is one of the ingredients in his Australian meat pies. You'll also need plain flour, short crust pastry, warm water, yeast extract spread, tomato ketchup, cooked lamb mince, and milk. First, I'm going to flour the surface. This stops the pastry sticking to the worktop. Don't forget the rolling pin. Roll out the pastry until it's nice and thin. I've been to Australia. It's really fun and it has a lot of activities to do. Now I'm going to cut some circles in the pastry. Jake is using a large pastry cutter for this. Put the pastry circles into an oiled muffin tin to make a pie case. Do the same again until you have made four pie cases. And use your fingers to shape them. Then re-roll your leftover pastry. I've got some family that lives in Australia. When I went to Bondi Beach, I did some surfing. Bondi Beach is a famous beach in Australia. The waves are really good. Now sprinkle some flour on a plate. I'm going to get my cutter that's smaller than the bigger cutter. And cut out four more smaller circles to make your pie lids. Put some flour on each circle so they don't stick to each other. Pop those to one side, you'll need them later. Now we're going to make the filling. Add some yeast extract spread to warm water, then add tomato ketchup and mix it, mix it, mix it. Then get the cooked and cooled lamb mince from the fridge that Dad cooked earlier. First, I'm going to put some flour into the lamb. We're going to give it a mix. Add the cooked lamb mince to the other ingredients and once again, mix it, mix it, mix it. What's next? It's time to add my special ingredients. And you know what that is, black pepper. Peppercorns are small fruits which grow on a vine in warm countries. These are picked when they're green, then cooked and dried out until they turn into black peppercorns. These can be ground up and the powder is used to make food spicy, hot and tasty. In ancient times, black pepper was very expensive and only used by the richest people who could afford to buy it. I'm going to do four to five twists. Mix it again and start adding the mixture to your pie cases. As well as mushrooms, you'll need cooked spinach, grated cheese, vegetable oil, plain flour, water and salt. 
First I'm going to get the flour and then I put a little hole and add the water and squish them together with my hands. What are you making there, Chuki? I am making the dough. That's more water and flour going in. It feels very squishy. It's like some slime. My mum told me how to make this recipe. My favourite food is Momo, so that's why I'm making it today. Flour the worktop, push and pull the dough some more, and then put the dough back into the bowl. Cover the bowl with a clean tea towel and put it to one side for later. Then wash those sticky fingers. Now I'm going to make the filling. Ask a grown-up to cook and cool some spinach for you. I'm going to use two forks to pull the spinach into small pieces. Add the spinach to grated cheese. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's mushrooms. Mushrooms are a type of fungus that grow very fast. There are many different types of mushrooms that grow in all sorts of places. It's important not to pick and eat them because not all mushrooms are safe to eat and some can even be poisonous. Mushrooms can grow very large and one type of mushroom has been found to be bigger than a blue whale. There are even mushrooms that glow in the dark and people have been known to use these to help them see their way around. I'm gonna get the um, mushrooms and I'm going to squish them together to small pieces. Have you been to Tibet before, Juki? I have been to Tibet before. There were like some dusty roads and there was lots of people and there were lots of traditional houses. Now I get the bowl with cheese and spinach and then I add the mushrooms in it. Add some vegetable oil and a pinch of salt. And then I mix them together. Chuki is using her hands, but you can use a spoon if you want to. And then I'm going to oil the steamer. That will stop the momos from sticking. Now I'm going to flour the surface and then I'm going to put the dough on. Split the dough in half and roll one half into a sausage shape because cooked lentils are one of the main ingredients in Yaya's recipe. You'll also need tomato passata, spring onions, black pepper, fresh parsley, ground cloves, garlic, smooth peanut butter, vegetable oil, vegetable stock powder, warm water and dry thyme. First, add a dessert spoon of peanut butter to warm water. Make sure nobody eating this is allergic to nuts. Add vegetable stock and give it a stir. What's next? Add some passata to the jug. And give it another stir. Add dry thyme, ground cloves, and a few twists of black pepper. Then you've guessed it. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now peel and crush your garlic. Just peel off the papery skin. Ask a grown-up to help you if you find this tricky. Guinea-Bissau is in Africa. It's very hot and it's a very nice place because there's lots of animals. I would like to go there one day. Now use a garlic crusher to carefully crush the garlic onto your worktop. Use a spoon to help you scrape any garlic off. Add it to the jug and mix it, mix it, mix it again. It's time to grease my casserole dish. Just brush oil over the dish. In Guinea-Bissau they speak Portuguese and another language called Creole. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. Mmm, and you know what that is, don't you? It's lentils. Lentils grow on a plant that has green leaves and small flowers. 
The flowers turn into pods, and inside these pods are the lentils, which can be used in cooking. Lentils grow in lots of different colours, including yellow, orange, brown, black and green. Lentils can be used in lots of different recipes, such as soups, salads and stews, just like yayas. Now it's time to wash my lentils. Tip the cooked lentils into a sieve and give them a good rinse under cold water. What are you up to now? I need to pour my lentils into the casserole dish. Carefully trim the ends of your spring onions and cut them into small pieces. Add them to the lentils. Fresh coconut is one of the ingredients in his Ravani cake. You'll also need eggs, vanilla paste, desiccated coconut, shelled pistachio nuts, semolina, natural yogurt, caster sugar, baking powder, olive oil, runny honey, rose water and plain flour. Balthazar is oiling his loaf tins with olive oil first. It kind of feels like you're painting. Haha, <laughs> oil painting! If you haven't got loaf tins, you could use four large muffin cases. Next, we have to pour all the yoghurt into the bowl. Then crack an egg into a mug, check for shell and add it to the bowl. And you do another egg. And don't forget to wipe your hands after touching raw egg. Give it a mix and add olive oil. I'm going to use this rose water. Ooh, rose water. Add to the bowl along with some vanilla paste. And you just give it a stir. What are you up to now, Baltazar? I'm going to use this um, yoghurt pot, which is for measuring the semolina. Great idea. Use the clean yoghurt pot to add semolina into a different bowl. Then add caster sugar, baking powder and plain flour. After all of that, you just give it a stir. It's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Coconut. A coconut palm is a tree with large green leaves that grows in very hot countries. The seed of the coconut palm is called a coconut. When the hard coconut shell is cut open, the soft white part can be found inside. This is the bit that you eat. The hairy part of the leftover coconut shell can be used for making lots of different things, including ropes, brushes, mats, and even stuffing for mattresses. Coconut palms grow in hot countries all over the world, and most of them can be found in India, the Philippines, and Indonesia. You need to grate the coconut. So my grand I used to go to my grandparents every once in a while, and they used to make me um, Turkish delight, which is my favorite. Scoop out the grated fresh coconut, and add it to the bowl of dry ingredients. You give it a stir. Then tip in the wet ingredients from your other bowl. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Then take two spoons and spoon the mixture into your oiled loaf tins. Not everyone likes the taste, so let's see if Elsa can change their minds because chives are one of the ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need black pepper, pre-soaked salt fish, paprika, butter, potatoes, chili flakes, vegetable oil and garlic. Now I'm going to get my cooked potatoes and put some butter in. Elsa's dad has cooked and cooled potatoes, which Elsa is mashing up with some butter. It's really hot in Guyana. I hope to go there one day. Add some paprika and chilli flakes. Make sure you don't get any in your eyes. Then mix it up. Now I'm going to twist the black pepper. 
What's next? We're going to peel some garlic. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help you. I'm going to put the garlic in the garlic presser. Carefully crush the garlic onto the worktop and use a teaspoon to help scrape it all off. Then do the same with another clove of garlic. Add the garlic to the bowl and mix it, mix it, mix it. I'm going to get the fish from the fridge. Elsa's dad has prepared the salt fish. Make sure you ask a grown-up to help you do this. I think we've got that in our bones. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, love. I need to break up all the fish into little bits. Tip it into the bowl and make sure you wash your hands after handling the salt fish. Then give it one more mix. Time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Chives! Chives are a type of herb with long, thin green leaves and purple flowers. When the leaves have grown tall, they can be cut from the plant and used in cooking. The leaves can be used in all sorts of recipes, including salads, soups and fish cakes. In the olden days, some people would hang bunches of chives in the house to keep away bugs and creepy crawlies. Now, tear your chives in half, then carefully cut them up. I think it tastes okay. Only okay? Let's see what everyone thinks later, because dates are one of the main ingredients in Sunny Mac's recipe. As well as dates, you'll need bananas, unsalted butter, digestive biscuits, warm water, whipping cream and cocoa powder. What's first? I will be breaking these biscuits up. Break them into small pieces. Then carefully bash them with the end of a rolling pin until they look like crumbs. Kids, if you do this at home, you have to wash your hands and have an apron. This is quite messy. It looks fun though. Ask a grown-up to melt the butter for you, and when it's slightly cooled, carefully tip it into the bowl. Then give it a good mix. Delicious! Tip the buttery biscuit crumbs onto baking paper in a cake tin. Spread them out and flatten with the back of a spoon, just like this. What's next? Now we're going to put the cake tin in the fridge. You'll need that a bit later. For my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's dates. Dates are a fruit that grow on date palm trees in hot countries. They are a sweet, oval shaped fruit and can grow on their own or in clumps. Dates can be eaten fresh or dried and used in salads, desserts, sauces, and even drinks. In ancient times, the people of Egypt used dates to make their bread taste nice and sweet. I'm going to weigh these chopped up dates to 100 grams. Sunny Mac is using dried chopped dates in his banoffee pie. Pour over some warm water and put the dish aside for later. Now I need to slush around my cream. Make sure the lid is on nice and tight and shake the jar of whipping cream like this. Shake it, shake it, shake it. This will make the cream lovely and thick. I really hope my friends Rex, Macy and Daisy will like my recipe. Let's hope so. I just need to have a little check. Oh, that's definitely done. Oh, it smells pretty good too. I'm sure it does. Now I need to mush all these dates up. Mash them down with the back of your fork to make a paste. What's next? Now I need my biscuit base from the fridge. 
The base has gone hard in the fridge, so you can tip it out of the cake case. Peel off the baking paper and put it on a plate. I do not like it. Oh dear, not everyone likes it. Do you think Marion can change their minds? Because feta cheese is one of the main ingredients in his recipe. You'll also need mushrooms, yellow pepper, chopped tomatoes, paprika, dried oregano, dried thyme, black pepper and eggs. First I'm going to break up some mushrooms. That's it. Just break and tear the mushrooms into pieces. The best cook in my family is my grandma. My mum and dad and grandma come from Bulgaria. Have you been there, Marion? I've been on holiday to Bulgaria. There were lots of great beaches. Put the torn mushrooms into a bowl. That's it. Now it's time to break up my pepper. Push and pull apart a yellow pepper, like this, to take out the seeds. Then tear it into small pieces. I really hope my friends like this recipe. Let's hope so. Put the pepper into the bowl with the mushrooms. And now I'm going to start seasoning these tomatoes using paprika. Then add dried oregano, dried thyme and a few twists of black pepper. One, two, three, four, five. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's feta cheese. Feta is a kind of cheese that is usually made from the milk of sheep or goats. It was invented a very long time ago by the people of ancient Greece. The milk is separated into solid curds and runny whey. To make the cheese, the curds are squashed together and drained to get rid of any leftover whey. This is cut up, sprinkled with salt and is then ready to eat. Carefully cut the feta cheese into smaller pieces so you can crumble it up with your hands. It's lovely and crumbly. That's it. Add the crumbled feta to the bowl of vegetables and mix it, mix it, mix it. What's next, Marion? I'm going to put my tomatoes in my special Bulgarian pots. Marion is using pots that come... Oh dear, not everyone likes the taste, but let's see if Pippa can change their minds because spring greens are one of the ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need cherry tomatoes, shallots, vegetable stock powder, black pepper, cooked chicken pieces, warm water, ginger puree, tomato puree, mild curry powder and garlic puree. So, what's first, Pippa? First, I'm going to put my stock powder in the warm water. Tip in the stock powder and add some mild curry powder. Squeeze out some tomato puree and add this to the jug too. I'm putting all of these ingredients in to make stock. Now I'm going to put the garlic in. Then do the same with some ginger puree. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now I'm going to pour in all of this into my casserole pot. Add some cherry tomatoes to the empty jug and carefully cut them up. I've been to Zimbabwe three times when I was a little baby. There's lots of animals. They have elephants, lions, chameleons, and they also have lots of giraffes and crocodiles. Tip the chopped tomatoes into the casserole dish as well. I'm 
cutting some shallots. Carefully cut the ends off a shallot. Peel off the papery skin. Then do the same with your other shallot. Then carefully cut the shallots in half. And chop them into pieces. The shallots give a really good flavour to the yama. Add your shallots to the casserole dish. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's spring greens. Spring greens are the leaves of a special young cabbage plant. The leaves are picked before the cabbage is fully grown, when the leaves are still loose on the plant. The leaves are cooked and used as an ingredient in many different recipes. It's thought that they were grown in the vegetable gardens of people who lived in ancient Greece a very, very long time ago. Now I'm going to break my spring greens in little parts. That's it. Tear the spring greens into small pieces. Keep tearing, Pippa. Oh dear, not everyone likes the taste. Can Tilly change their minds because nutmeg is an important ingredient in her recipe? You'll also need dark chocolate, ground almonds, an egg, ground cinnamon, caster sugar, flour, ground cloves and water. First of all, you pour the caster sugar into the ground almonds. My dad taught me to make this recipe. My mum and dad are great cooks. Give it a good mix and make sure nobody eating this is allergic to almonds. Now I need to get some chocolate and break it up into little pieces. Tilly's using dark chocolate. Mmm, it looks yummy. Then, grate your chocolate into small pieces. Go on, Tilly. Grate it, grate it, grate it. Switzerland, people eat a lot of chocolate. Use a fork to get the grated chocolate out of the grater. Great work, Tilly. Add the chocolate to the other ingredients, along with ground cinnamon and ground cloves. And mix it all up. Mix it, mix it, mix it. special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's ground nutmeg. A nutmeg tree has green leaves, grows yellow flowers and small pear-shaped fruit. Inside each fruit is a shiny seed covered with red threads. These are dried in the sun and the threads are removed to reveal the nutmeg seed. This is then ground and used to add a sweet taste to lots of different recipes. It has a strong spicy smell that makes it a special ingredient in many Christmas dishes. Now I need three twists of nutmeg. Grind it, grind it, grind it. Then crack an egg, check it for shell and pour it onto a plate. Trap the yolk in an egg cup and tip the white into a bowl. What's next? my mixture. I'm using my hands now to get the mixture together. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, using your hands to make your biscuit dough. This is the really fun bit. Squeeze it into a ball and don't forget to wash your hands after touching raw egg. What's next? I'm sprinkling my ground almonds so that my biscuit dough doesn't stick. 